So good afternoon everyone. Uh, this is Rajendran here joining from Market Calls. In this tutorial, we are going to look into how to observe order flow charts. This is the one uh, uh, which you are going to make the observation on day-to-day -day basis. Let it be any stocks, let it be any, uh, let it be index, index futures or cash markets or uh, uh, even let it be bonds or cryptocurrencies. Let it, the, the basic underlying principles are going to remain the same. We are going to look into some of the uh, underlying principles which are going to govern uh, what you have to focus on the order flow charts right so before getting into the session uh, i'm going to show you one of the signature traits and then from there on onwards we are going to derive uh, how to use these strategies right so uh, whatever in this webinar we're going to discuss are the core underlying principles of order flow and uh, all the strategies are built on top of this uh, core underlying principles right so uh, first let's start with uh, one of the signature traits which we discussed in the last uh, um, um, in, in the last trades last section this is a live market commentary which happened on 29th of november 2018 where one of the day uh, lupin was breaking uh, you can see that the lupin was making an abc elongation it was make it was breaking a multi day high so as simple as that lupin was breaking one of the day with a multi-day high where you can see that the price was making an A and B and C and elongation where there are a lot of, lot of single prints at the C period and a lot of single prints at the B period. In fact, price also broke on the multi-day high and uh, let, let's observe how this uh, price action happens and how you can use auto flow to time the markets. Right? That's a strategy which I'm going to run the video. Once the video is done, I'm going to explain uh, from the backwards, what are the principles we have to use, how you have to look for such kind of a momentum exhaustion. Right. So let me run this video here. This keeps going up and up and up. 893.5 it's good it's going so far no more weakness yet at this point of time no hammer pattern but what i'm seeing is it's all these are momentum buyers they're just, just chasing the price you never know if still again long-term players are there they might chase till the end of the day they might keep on going up so the end of the momentum is where the momentum exhaustion comes. So you have to wait for some sort of a hammer kind of pattern. And then uh, again, or some, or any, any kind of places where it says like momentum exhaustion. No weakness at another five minutes. The C period is about it. End up. Okay, some sort of a hammer pattern. I mean, it's still not confirmed. I mean, we have another two more minutes to confirm. So, is this a hammer pattern? Then, uh, if, the, if this can ends like a hammer, then possibly we can suspect this as a potential top. And moreover, C period is also about the end. But, uh, yeah, let's see. But no momentum sellers yet. That hammer pattern. Some good sell off there and so far. And C period about started. Despite all the positivity, the selling is happening. That is good. I think maybe in another one minute it's gonna stop. So it's forming like a hammer so far. Yeah, so it's a hammer. 
right? So one of the places where you can use this as a reference. Now your stop will be pretty tight here. So maybe you can take a stop around 894 or somewhere, and you can take a trade uh, over here. So there is some elongation over there. At the same time, I'm going to look into range bar charts. From the order flow, I'm not saying you're going to see any weakness as of now yet. So in that case, I'm going to look into range bar charts to check any weakness. But I can figure out that uh, I can put a stop now here and I can monitor C3 is about the start. right? So there are a lot of single prints down there. A lot of single prints down there. Okay, so a lot of single prints which can be get uh, clear. The single print zones, these single print zones are your potential target. Or if the day is gonna, even if it's gonna print like an P shape profile, you can expect some P shape activity either in this band or so. All right, and uh, let's have a quick look into what's happening inside of inside our range bar charts. When it comes to range bar charts, I prefer using um, eight blocks. So, what is the TPO size here? The TPO size is indicators. The TPO size multiplied by eight. It gives you 40 range bar charts. It gives you 40 range bar charts. It gives you 40 range bar charts. Right? So 40 R. And uh, when I say 40 R, automatically it, it converts everything into eight blocks. So you will be seeing eight blocks over there. And this is a uh, this is where the momentum exhaustion happened. So you can see the range bar charts. I'm clearly able to spot a momentum exhaustion in this candle. So that candle is my stop. Probably if you are using a well uh, trend analyzer, so not well trend analyzer, maybe I'll pull up looping charts again to show clearly that well del uh, well this indicator called. Uh, okay, anyways, I'll first bring the charts and you see. I want range bar charts 40R. So 40R. Okay, here we go. We got a range bar charts. And this is our range bar charts. It looks like on top of the range bar charts, I'm going to apply the uh, go to template. Uh, sorry, I'll go to indicators. What I want to show here is the bell uh, R delta. Right? So you can call R delta as Rajendran delta, reversal delta. It's one of our own uh, uh, setup pattern where we can possibly take up and possible potential uh, top setup and uh, price per one. I'm gonna keep it as five. That is 25 paise TPO. Bye. So maybe that particular bar. Where is that bar? This right, right. 47.55 is 42 candles, then 42 candles. What am I wrong here? Yeah. Okay, I'll add this chart indicators. I mean, as per me, that's a top. So I'll add value delta. So we'll be getting an RD shot over here. So that means it is a momentum exhaustion pattern. So it is a momentum exhaustion pattern. So we got around 1052 and price started sliding in. Momentum sellers are stepping in now. Right? So that is the confirmation that you need to watch out for. It, it's still, I mean, uh, this eight block range has to break again and this momentum sellers has to stay. So far I'm seeing some momentum sellers there. But yes, order flow shown the weakness, order flow shown the weakness over here. So your stop will be somewhere above this uh, band. So maybe around 894 is what? I'll consider keeping a stop here and take a mean reversion <coughs> back. Okay, what's happening in Nifty? Buying Nifty, Nifty, buying Nifty, continuing with the good odds. Keep going up. So not to fight, high confidence day. Bye.
trying to still inside the reach. HCFC Bank, pay high and confidence. You have to be a fast trader and you have to attempt for the day. Uh, single print. So, I'm going to pass here. I'm going to show you how the day reacted to that. So, that particular day, what happened is that that particular day, uh, the, that completely mean reversion happens and uh, it cleared those single prints. Um, maybe I'll show you the price action from the candlestick perspective because I don't have access to the out of flow charts now. But I can show you uh, how the reaction happened on Lupin on that day. It's 30th. So, 30th is where we had a 29th. 29th is where we had the a two day uh, or multi day breakout. So it, it broke an almost four day high. So this is a day. This is a day where initially it forms like an ABC elongation. It forms an ABC elongation when it is breaking a multi day high. And uh, I'll show you 29th activity, 29th intraday activity. Let's go back to one minute chart of uh, 29th. Here is 29th of uh, November, where we had the initial ABC elongation, A and B and C elongation. So if you look at the order flow, this is where the momentum exhaustion happens. The, uh, the R delta alert, the R delta short alert, which we are getting over here, and, uh, that, that gives an odds to fade towards uh, the ABC, uh, uh, ABC uh, elongation. So all the ABC elongation was up to here. That got uh, clear that that's a pure intraday trade and uh, November month we spotted three such opportunities one in nifty another one in reliance another one in lupin so three all the three are successful uh, abc elongation all the three abc elongation formed with an a kind of an rd uh, all are multi day breakout first of all all the mul uh, abc elongations are multi day breakout and uh, all the abc elongations ended up with some sort of a momentum exhaustion which is confirmed from the order flow and uh, the mean reversion trade is what which is, has been taken at the day high and uh, the price tend to mean revert towards the single print zones of the b and c price levels that that is the trade which happened uh, in loop in here that is a trade which we uh, done in november month in reliance and in nifty so nifty uh, nifty I'll, I'll show you later on as the time permits but as of now the context here is that Whenever a, a day is breaking multi-day high and it is forming an ABC elongation, right? So the first thing is that you have to learn to wait rather than jumping first. Wait for the C to come nearing the completion and confirm from the order flow that RD short is getting in or uh, if you don't have access to the R delta setup, uh, confirm from the order flow that that momentum exhaustion pattern is happening. So I'm going to discuss about that momentum exhaustion pattern. How it is going to uh, how you can identify momentum exhaustion pattern momentum exhaustion again it happens everywhere but we are not uh, uh, interested at every other places but we are mostly interested uh, if there is an abc elongation is happening and uh, is the day uh, that the cp that high is happening with the momentum exhaustion or not so wait for that momentum exhaustion momentum exhaustion happens enter into the trade or you can also find at times the kind of a hammer pattern a kind of a hammer pattern on a three minute charts so you'll be able to find uh, figure out the hammer pattern and uh, that is where you can also uh, figure out that that is a, a moment of exhaustion is happening from the three minute charts you'll be seeing as a hammer whereas if you are using a range bar charts you'll be seeing able to clearly able to identify that moment of exhaustion happening from the order flow charts so the moment of exhaustion uh, uh, happens in the form of uh, uh, it, it's one of the pattern one of the signature trades over here um, where I'll show you so these are two momentum exhaustion pattern one is RD long signal it is a zone where short sellers are getting exhausted it is a zone where short sellers are getting exhausted it is a zone where price candle closes positive. Price would be closing positive. Price will be closing positive. So if you look at the candle, candle will be closing positive. 
after a sustained downtrend after a sustained downtrend you'll be seeing that uh, the candle closes positive the candle closes positive but if you look into the delta information the delta will be negative the delta will be like the reading will be minus 400 means the sellers are in control in that candle sellers are in control in the candle and there is a minimum delta so there is something called minimum delta the minimum delta is negative maybe something like uh, minus 600 and the max delta is zero max delta is zero so if you understand what is minimum delta and maximum delta so minimum delta is nothing but it always uh, when the delta starts when the delta starts it has a opening value it has a delta has an opening value for, a, for any bar delta will have an opening value and it will have a closing value closing value and it has a high and low <coughs> close it has a high value and it has a low value that delta low is called as the minimum delta that delta high is called as the max delta means for example let's say a, a price is moving up and down in a five minute candle like this so at the same time the delta also the delta calculation also starts it always starts at zero the opening of the delta for any candle is always zero as the buyer started controlling in the delta will be keep on moving positive and when sellers are stepping in the delta goes down again buyers are in control sellers are trying to push down lately buyers are stepping up and up and up so delta will have some values if the buyers are in control probably we can say like 500 buyers total buyers control the day right so this is price and this is the delta so price also ends up and delta also goes up so the maximum delta is where we call it as a max delta the maximum high of the delta which has been reached and the minimum delta which has been reached maybe it would have been reached only minus 100 that minus 100 will be printed as the minimum delta over here so minimum delta over here so now to identify momentum exhaustion so a momentum exhaustion happens over here if you look at the price section um, price will be initially sellers will be trying to control but lately uh, the sellers will be lagging control and uh, with low volume buyers will be able to shoot up right buyers will be coming up with low volume so this will be happening with low volume low volume buyers take control low volume buyers take control but if you look into the delta the delta will be uh, starts at zero the delta starts at zero zero and it, it plunges down deeply because initially sellers will be pushing really hard but when the at the close of the price very less buyers will be showing up that is why the close of the delta will be negative the close of the delta will be negative negative right so that's how the moment of exhaustion pattern happens if you look at the delta the overall delta will be negative that means the closing delta or whatever the delta which we are seeing is nothing but the close of the delta will be negative the minimum delta the minimum delta which is uh, uh, reached will be again this is a minimum delta point which will be again negative again negative and the max delta will be zero the max delta that is the, from zero right from the start the sellers are pushing the price down and uh, lately some uh, some small buyers are able to push the price really up that is why you are getting a positive candle if the candle is positive price end up positive over there but if you look from right from the start right from the start when that particular candle is controlled only by the sellers but despite that candle is ending positive that means kind of a momentum exhaustion is happening so this kind of pattern if it is happening at the uh, if, when you are seeing an abc elongation and one of the uh, when the abc c period is about to complete you are seeing that uh, um, rd short signal the rd short signal is a reverse of it uh, rd short will be something like price will be going uh, um, in uptrending markets in uptrending markets at the, at the day stop what happens is that uh, buyers will be controlling the markets but despite buyers controlling uh, initially it, it goes up and uh, lately price enters down that is why you get a if you look from the three minute candle charts you'll be getting an uh, you'll be getting an inverted hammer kind of an inverted hammer setup so this let's say this is a three minute candle at the end of the c period you'll be seeing a momentum exhaustion happening 
from the candle perspective but if you look from the delta perspective the delta would have been moved something like this initially it starts at zero initially buyers will be too many buyers will be present but lately the buyers will be lagging control but uh, with less number of selling activity they are able to plunge the price down to negative the, the, the candle ends negative the price ends negative over here whereas the delta ends positive the closing delta will be positive closing delta will be positive and minimum delta here is the minimum delta well, this minimum delta will be zero and maximum delta max delta will be positive that that's what it happened in uh, lupin uh, at that time uh, at when, they, when it reaches the day high that momentum exhaustion pattern comes in that is why uh, you are able to see a short signal the short signal is uh, it, it comes something like this it's it's where the uh, it's a zone where the short term uh, buyers got exhausted it is where the candle closes negative despite buyers are in control that means the delta is positive in that candle delta is positive minimum delta is zero max delta is positive and the candle closes negative these are the significant uh, uh, sign that the momentum exhaustion is happening that that is what it happened in lupin lupin if you remember there was a short signal got generated over there on 29th of uh, april that is where precisely your entry point is that is where precisely your entry point is to fade all those abc elongation whenever there is a multi day it's kind of a multi day abc elongation happen letter a letter b and letter c when the letter c is uh, breaking out at the end of the c you see this pattern you see this uh, um, candle one of the candle on a 3 minute chart it, it end up like an uh, kind of an hammer inverted hammer it end up like a kind of an inverted hammer and from there onwards if you look into the delta also with delta we get a rd short signal you got an rd short signal that means that candle closed negative the candle closed negative but delta was positive in that candle minimum delta is zero means right from the start if, if the minimum delta is zero means right from the start only buyers are controlling that candle uh, that is why uh, right from the start buyers are controlling the candle but despite that the candle is closing negative that is a key information over here to identify potential market top on an abc elongation day with a multi day breakout the immediately you you take a shot over here with a with the stops with the tightest stops over here that is a three point stops for an uh, main reversion towards uh, something like a 10 points that is that's kind of one is to three ratio kind of trade uh, which usually happens in some other uh, uh, zones uh, if not in uh, uh, if not in reliance today it might be happening in, AB, in hcfc bank if not it will be happening somewhere else that kind of abc elongation with multi day breakout it keeps happening if if in november we are able to spot three trades only during live markets maybe in a month uh, approximately 10 to 15 trades you will be able to spot out with low risk opportunity right so only if you are able to focus only on this abc elongation and uh, r delta long and short you will be able to narrow down some decent intraday trading opportunity most of the intraday trading opportunity comes with 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 5 kind of uh, setup that's one of a uh, one of a place the only thing is that your most of your trade will happen around anywhere between 10:35 to 10:45 most of your trades happens most of the momentum exhaustion happens only your entry is your entry will happen not because of abc elongation abc elongation combined with momentum exhaustion that is where your entry happens with a very very tight risk band because of that if you if you look only from the market profile perspective you, you can see an abc elongation and you may enter into it but um if you have a control in uh, of order flow you can even time those uh, trades as well time pin perfectly you will be able to time those uh, trades the only thing is you have to wait for an abc elongation with a multi day breakout followed by that confirmation from the order flow that momentum exhaustion is happening then you can take a mean reversion trades your target levels are nothing but the clearance of those single prints since the abc elongations are uh, bigger price elongation you will get a significant risk reward ratio opportunity to fade those uh, you can expect a, a good counter move to fade those b and c period single prints it may be I'll, i'll show you one of the example from uh, reliance also reliance also it happened on uh, um, reliance you go to reliance charts 
Williams. One of the day it was breaking multi-day breakout in November. With an ABC elongation, in fact. It comes up with an ABC elongation. November it broke a multi-day breakout. But possibly I think this could be the day. There is one multi-day breakout was here. There is one more multi-day breakout. I think possibly this is either this is this haven't broken multi-day. This broken the multi-day. So 16th of November. I want to pull out 16th of November uh, charts to show you how the activity happened. 16th of November. It's the same similar pattern. That, that's completely over by uh, end of the day. So I mute it for some time. This is Nifty. That is Reliance. Yeah, here. If you look into the reliance, let me run this. We got an uh, acceptance above uh, here. So point of control build above double distribution balance. On uh, 15th as well, we look into 15th number activity, a lot of crisscross activity. Point of control was almost here. And price shoot up, it, it, it comes down. So note down the time. Time is 11.22. Right? It, it was in the process of making an uh, a, B, A, A, B, C elongation, that, that's the time. So let me continue the video. Um, point of control, it's, it's very confusing over here. Point of control got built below the double distribution balance very slightly, uh, just two points down below the double distribution balance. I would say that acceptance came in, but at the same time, if you look into the structure, the day structure here at the day is high. Letter A, J, L, all are having exactly uh, matching reference. So mostly the short term players, weaker hands used to sell like this. We already seen a similar example in Nifty, right? I think it is Nifty or some other charts. I think it is Nifty, I guess. Yeah, here. We've seen a similar example here in Nifty as well. See this. Similarly, let us C, D, E are exactly having a matching reference. It's a poor high, but it is it is from the weaker hand players. Uh, every time the price reaches the day high, someone is coming and shorting this market. So, despite the, having all these odds, uh, you have to carry forward this information, which is very critical here. Let us A, J, and L. It says that. We are dealing with the weaker hand sellers. Who else are trying to push below the double distribution balance are most weaker hand uh, sellers. So if, uh, the confidence is turning higher, stay away from cutting again. Mostly everyone will have a stop. And market would be serious enough to take this. What could have happened is again a kind of a stop and thing. Similar, uh, similar kind of uh, structure was there in uh, Nifty, but it was kind of a weaker high. So by this way, you'll be able to understand where top could be forming in the market. So they took a two-day high, and still they are going up. There are a lot of single prints. Um, so they took a two-day high, and one of the other thing, what I have to monitor is the price is coming down. Are they? This level has to be monitored. So far, it's a high confidence market. Don't fight it. Let the market. Um, settle on its own, right? So again, there is one more. Um, it's it's straight away going up. But there are odds that uh, these little things can be get clear and price can start back into the range. That that odd is there. 
because it, it's still going up with, without rotation. So it, it's not a good place to short, but you should be waiting for some more extension. Let's say the C period is going for some more or bigger high, then you can expect the rotations. You can go and say like if it's A, B, C, uh, it is what, then it's more of an A, B, C elongation. Odds of price coming in. What if the day is not a single print day? So you can go and fade it. Or the other case is that it could turn out to be an we got another extension and we are trying to chart here and they could turn out to be a dull boring day lately and it could turn to be a feature profile. That's a case positional shots are not at all advised. In fact, price has been taken out multiple day high. So not only two day high, it took one, two, three, four, five. Five day high has been taken out. So five day high has to be monitored. Price has the odds of coming back below five, five day high. So it's an ABC elongation so far. Uh, still one have to wait for the C to get to end up. The price has the odds of coming down below. Um, this reference. Wait for the C period high because C period might get as much as exciting as much as possible. So these are still high confidence market, so you should not fight. And if you are fight, if you want to fight, you have to be a fast trader here. Uh, let's say that you're getting any extension, you try to short here, and uh, it's it's not working. You have to step away. Right? You cannot be a uh, slow trader over here. So, but but you have, you, have, you can only bet on the odds that uh, the, the single prints in C period could get clear. And uh, you know, in the in the best case, you can uh, still get a single print clearance of the. So maybe the second half could be coming and doing something like this. So some intraday opportunity, I, I believe it might come in uh, uh, reliance at the C period. It's, it's straight away going like an ABC elongation with an odds of rotation back in the rotation. And Nifty, what about Nifty now? Still left one clue. Price is not still not willing to come down. They are doing activity higher. I think mostly they will be uh, they will be doing some sort of an activity picking up. But lately they might come down um, post 130. They might come and pick this uh, reference or they might be doing lot many even more uh, more and more interplay player might come and join. And that is why you can come and uh, try to attempt to fade these. Uh, Okay, so this reliance ABC elongation has to be watched. Open activity is building higher. Momentum trading is there. Yesterday also momentum trading came after the rally high. I want to remove this reference. It's no more active. And today's reference, active reference, are it took three day high. Right? So it means it is initially high confidence. The weaker uh, low. So, I mean, these kinds of activity has to trail. So these are the cases you should not fight, but you should be ready to fight once the C period is over and B started coming in. And that is why you should be able to look for mean rotation. Until then, uh, maybe C elongation. Okay. Uh, mostly where the intraday players are getting long and long and long, and they're getting long too long. Of course, it also broken five day high. Broken five day high means lot many stop could have been here. Uh, stop could have been at this highs, probably stop could have been at this uh, these zones. And a lot of stops in this could be in this band. The price would have been uh, uh, took all the weaker hand short sellers. But there's a lot of single prints out there. So that is the risk what traders are getting from. So if you are in longs, you have to keep on trailing your stops here definitely. Because there are odds that whatever the gains you got in the morning would have been obviously could have been lost. So maybe 
price might come in and uh, revisit uh, this trend that, that is that probability is always there so what you have to do is that so you can use some stop loss like the super trend or something like that you can trail it so these kinds of activity has to trail them because market is moving good you see the action a b c players are highly confident but uh, this is not a good way of buying price cannot just like that keeps never keeps going up and up and up right it keeps going up and up and up you have to be uh, in a position to monitor and uh, look for mean reversion opportunity so this is very high confidence market don't fight it but it could stop at cpt because it's an it, it's becoming an abc kind of elongation and that becomes so we, you can if you are in the long side we should be using some sort of a trailing stop loss or if you want to short this kind of market you have to be a fast trader you have to wait for the cpt rate to end because as i said the cpt rate can spike up as much as possible to scare everyone they never know how how far they could spike but they are in a spiking mode yeah so maybe uh, one of the places where you can think so maybe you can use tools like order flow to confirm uh, what is happening around there maybe i'll pull up order flow tomorrow we'll be discussing about order flow in detail as of now let me pull up order flow and check if there is any weakness from an intraday perspective or not we most in using 5 minute time frame kind of charts 5 minute Five minute or three minute, you can use it to check where is, are there are any momentum sellers or the sellers are really coming or not. There you go. Maybe I think we might be getting some selling pressure over here. Let me check. Let me confirm with Williams. I think by adding uh, bell order flow or uh, bell delta. Okay, so the price per row I'll be generally using uh, 50 paise CPU. Not 50 paise, but uh, I have to key in 0 0.05 into 25. I believe. Can it be possible? I think that is a selling pressure, but let, let's confirm with uh, with the order flow that it's a selling pressure. I mostly used to prefer the last imbalance. Okay, I'll talk about it tomorrow in, de in detail. So, what is the lot size of variance? So I'll go to indicators. I'll say 10 times of volume and lot size is uh, lot, lot size I can see in the lot size using this one. Lot size, lot size. This one. Thousand. To be able to see. Inside the candlesticks, we can see how many buyers, sellers, and uh, who is smart. Whether the buyers or sellers are sellers, where the selling pressure is coming in, that will be one should be able to see it. This list, maybe I'll see get down to 25 price CPT. Go to indicators, I'll say five. So that, because the range is still very less.
probably any moment of selling moment of selling from big sellers are coming here maybe so you see this quantity some 2000 sellers selling actually has been happening selling is quite big there in this candle so i'm not able to show here but selling was really big in this candle it's 2000 quantity here some big sellers entered over here it's 2000 sellers so this, has, this, has, this place has to be checked uh, so far so if i am seeing a lot of three or uh, more than three candles uh, of selling activity then probably some big selling activity was happening as of now it's still not confirmed maybe when the candle ends if you're seeing more selling activity in this candle uh, of course big seller entered here that doesn't mean like um, you should go and short immediately so it is one one information what says that some big seller entered here you never know uh, what is the time frame they're going to hold you never know whether they will be holding for one year or you never know whether they, they are interest players but one large quantity entered over here at double one five zero it doesn't mean like immediately price will go down but uh, uh, followed by that like if there is a follow through sellers are coming in not many sellers are coming in then probably you can say that it's, it's a high confidence they are mostly high confidence sellers the seller selling activity was there was some big selling quantity at least there you can see at least as of now time being the five minute bar it still takes three minutes to complete but i'm seeing a lot of selling stack to selling here stack to selling here stack to selling here so if you are seeing most you know they generally when these kinds of signal happens the mean version the primary activity will be there'll be mean version towards the vwap there will be there should be an imperial mean version towards vwap vwap is around here this is a reference level 118 or somewhere you can expect the mean was that that also says like the uh, ab the letter ab can be get cleared that also says like see the profile a lot of single prints around there maybe uh, now the letter d is going to stop so when the d letter d starts it clears the single prints and i'm i'm seeing momentum exhaustion there it's not a flop of course at least and uh, in a good case it also move towards clearing those interest so that that is odd from an intraday perspective if this is odd you can think at this okay. now i'll show you uh, how the 16th november day spanned out okay so i'll i'll go and show you from the candlestick charts so candlestick charts i'll go and show you one minute time frame on 16th of november Sixteen, sixteen of November. Now here is sixteenth of November. You can see this is where the ABC elongation happened. The entire ABC elongation happened. The ABC elongation happened till uh, the day high was uh, happened around ten thirty-five, and uh, we got a hammer setup also on a three-minute chart. The same hammer pattern we got it, and uh, you see the price activity here, which happened. Uh, uh till uh 12 o'clock it, it clears almost all the abc single prints all the abc single prints it got cleared by revisiting the price uh 1115 so that's a 15 point opportunity in uh, in uh, reliance so 15 to 12 12 to 15 point opportunity with a tighter risk band of just uh, less than 1 point or 2 points so with a, with a greater risk reward ratio so these kinds of setups usually used to happen whenever there is a <coughs> multi day abc elongation happening with a confirmation from the order flow in the form of r delta short on the positive side if it's on the reverse side you will be getting r delta long where the it's nothing but a momentum exhaustion setup as we discussed uh, so it it uses the combinations of delta patterns the delta uh, will be uh, extremely positive or extremely uh, negative <coughs> but despite that <coughs> the candle will be moving on the other side <coughs> <coughs> that primarily shows that uh, the buyer exhaustion or seller exhaustion is happening 
you have a very uh, good control over uh, these kinds of trade setups in uh, targeting towards the VWAP levels or targeting towards the clearance of the B and C single prints with a greater confidence, right? So we already talked about which ABC elongation to take, which ABC elongation not to take. So uh, those ABC elongation with the multi-day breakouts are the mean reversion uh, setups. The confirmation here, we are using uh, R delta alerts to take a confirmation over here, right? And you, 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 during the intraday period, you'll have ample amount of time to set up your, um, if you're watching in market profile, you, uh, market will give you ample amount of time to set up your order flow charts and to get a confirmation from the order flow charts. The very next time, whenever you're seeing multi-day ABC elongation, open your uh, R delta, make sure that it's confirmed from the R delta that the momentum exhaustion is happening. Then you can go and punch your orders with a tight risk maybe a bracket order will do intraday bracket order will do where you can have a tighter stops and you have a, a targets which are nothing but the, the clearance of the b and c single prints you're done for the day right so place your bracket order and move away from the system that's it so one more similar exhaustion happened in november um, i'm not going to show you the setup but it's there in the daily market commentary you can go and check it out but uh, in november um, one of the day price was broken multi-day high with the ABC elongation. That's where the uh, Mr. Urjit Patel resignation news got it spread out. So in November month, I'm just going to show you how the day's elongation happened in November. This is the day, I think November 13th. You can go and refer the November 13th daily market commentary where it broken multi-day low with an ABC elongation. I believe this is the day. Yeah, it's a day. This is the, this could be the day, 12th. It could be 12th, 13th. So let me go back and check, show you 13th of, uh, I'll show you from, from 30 minute charts on 13th of November, 13th of November. Not, it's not 13th of November. It's not an ABC elongation. There was one ABC elongation came with a multi-day breakout in November. Which day it could be? Market December. Election day. Right? Election results. No, no, I'm not talking about. There is one more day where Urjit Patel resignation is confirmed. Uh, he very first rumor came. Second rumor he that's an uh, first, first time Urjit Patel resignation. Uh, uh, he said like he's going to resign. That is the first thing he said. Like the second time he actually resigned. Um, it came up with a multi-day breakout. Maybe celebration. Probably I think this should be the day. Or otherwise 26th of November. Uh, but 26th of November is not a multi-day breakout. It is a multi-day breakout on the downside. Okay, maybe I think it's 12th of... It, it looks like 12th of... Uh, 12th of November. 30 minute charts. I'll go to 12th of November because that is also a multi-day breakout. 12th of November. As I said, most of the multi-day breakouts are kind of uh, fake breakouts mostly. Mm, no, 12th of November is also not a multi-day breakout. Just give me a second. I have a check here. Fourth of November it is. Okay, so fourth of November. Here it is. Fourth of November, bank nifty open gap down. Fourth of November. Fourth of November or thirty first October? Say it's thirty first October. Okay, thirty first October. By return a post on fourth of November. Let me go and check fourth of. Thirty 
थर्टी फर्स्ट थर्टी फर्स्ट थर्टी फर्स्ट या थर्टी फर्स्ट हियर वी गॉट एन ए बी सी एलॉन्गेशन हियर वी गॉट एन ए बी एंड सी एलॉन्गेशन विद दिस इज निफ्टी but it's not a multi day breakout um just give me a second now 31st let me go and check 31st Okay, maybe it could be some other day. I'm not very sure about it, and uh, let's uh, let's not bother about it. One more day, we got a similar ABC elongation in Nifty, and uh, maybe it, uh, if time permits, I'll show you those uh, videos uh, again later. It's a similar example, but on the downside. By the downside, it was breaking multi-day uh, low, and it almost Nifty was down by 100 points. And uh, but it it happens with some news. It, it could be Urjit Patel resignation or some other global impact, but. Finally, they they recovered all the A and B period single prints. All the A and B period single prints, they got uh, restored back on the same day itself. So, I'll I'll try to get those video uh, later on. Now let's get back to the um, charts. I guess I guess uh, we are clear with uh, the RD long and RD short signals. I'm I'm going to show you uh, next week. I'm going to show you a couple of more signals based on. Uh, not one this is only based on abc elongation but we use uh, rd short and rd short signal and rd long signal in tandem with uh, some other context as well so uh, at, at times the rd longs will be uh, coming in the form of we'll be using mostly eight blocks range bar charts when i'm using rd long or rd short and uh, we'll be mostly trying to take on a pullback more like a little bit of three points or four points pullback we'll try to take a, we'll initiate a trade over here Usually, these RD long will get a confirmation on the close of the candle. Once the candle closes, the signal appears, and uh, appearance of the signal is not a trade. You have to look for a little bit of pullback, three points, four back pullback. That is why you can keep a tight stops of some five to six points, tighter stops. The end result is your, your expectation is towards the clearance of the VWAP level. So price goes and revisits the VWAP level. That is the expectation. And uh, in fact, some. Uh, Two days back, similar uh, similar uh, trade happened uh, in, in in RD longs, so where the markets are falling, markets are really falling fast, and <coughs> that day low it creates RD long, and again it creates one more RD long, and it creates one more RD long, and finally market uh, completely reverses all its uh, gains. I mean, completely reverses all its losses. Also, uh, does it uh, R delta works on any other uh, order flow? I shown you, no. I shown you so, in Lupin. I showed you in uh, Reliance. No, 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 no. I'm not asking about the chart uh, uh, stock. I'm asking about the tool wise. Uh, tool wise. Other field. than other than uh, other than build TPO, hmm. uh, does the uh, R delta works on any other order flow? <coughs> yes, it it of course works in every order flow. So, uh, as long as order flow is providing delta, minimum delta, max delta. Uh, you should be able to gauge the R delta signals. Okay. Yeah. So uh, of course, most of the tools provides, I believe, and uh, so you don't need to bother about it. So as long as your table is having delta, minimum delta, and max delta, you should be able to figure out the R D short signals and R D long signals. So this R D R D long signals can come but, automatically. Yeah, it automatically, but it, there is a filter also. Now it will not consider all the R D longs and R D shorts. So if you look into the charts. Let, let me pull up an RD longs and RD short signal for Nifty. <coughs> I'll show you how to set up RD longs and RD short. First, let me pull up Nifty futures. Nifty futures. We'll be typically using an uh, 25 into 8 is somewhere around 
200 so 200 range back so how, uh, in the regarding the range how many uh, how do we need to uh, <coughs> it is based upon your eight times of your tick size eight eight times of your tpo size eight times of eight times of your tpo size so eight times of your tpo size let's say the tpo size is 25 and eight into eight it is 200 range bar charts so again i'll go to indicators i'll go and get rd bell r delta pro make this a tpo size of the default tick size is 25 you can use 20 or 25 Divide by seventy-five. Seventy-five and this twenty. Twenty is one point TPO, right? Twenty is one point TPO, and you, you can see if you scroll down and see there is one more filter available over there. So the filter is it, it, there is a filter here, and in fact there is alert is also there. This alert will send you automatically to your email also. It sends you a sound alert also. You know that is all that a signal alert is there. It it alerts you, and uh, so there is a POC offset alert is there. What does it means is that it looks for it. This is in terms of percentage terms, point one five percentage. That is in if you look in terms of Nifty, uh, the R delta signal should form um, that the distance between the signal and the VWAP levels. The signal distance between the signal and VWAP level should be a minimum of point five. Then only it generates an alert. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, generate any alert at all. so it it generates an rd long signal then you can expect price to go on mean towards towards the vwap levels so that is a filter over here if you if you set like 0.25 uh, any signals which is coming less than 0.25 percentage range from the vwap it will be discarded so the distance should be more than 0.25 percentage from the vwap then only there is a significant distance there So only those signals uh, are uh, legitimate signals. At times, what happens? Uh, VWAP will be forming and RD longs uh, forms, but the market tend to ignore it. That is why the filter is kept over here as a minimum of point one five percentage for scalping. So something like this. There is RD long, and uh, usually it goes and uh, clears the um, it goes and clears the VWAP levels. So when the RD signal long generates, when the RD signal long generates, you have to look into. So what is happening is that the delta is negative, right? So that is first thing. Second thing is minimum delta is zero, max delta is negative, and despite that, the candle is closing positive. That is a sign of a momentum exhaustion. that is where the rd long signal gets generated and the uh, stops has to be placed below that but it's not an, when when this candle completes only you will get a, a signal you have to what you have to do is that you have to wait for two or three points dip and uh, that is why you have to enter into the trade or you can put a, a limit order uh, wait for the price to do some pullback and enter on that that is why your risk will be five points or at times it can go as low as two points also your your stop loss can go as low as two points also And usually, it, it tend to mean towards towards the VWAP levels. So VWAP level is done; you are done for the day, right? So, uh, this this VWAP level is done. Usually, you are out of the game. So, mostly, your uh, uh, your approach will be somewhere between fifteen uh, to twenty twenty five points is what maximum you will be able to get from this range of trades. But with the the, the risk element is very very uh, less over here. Four to five point tight risk. you'll be able to manage to take such a scalping opportunity right so this is the trade which have generated around uh, 230 on last uh, friday okay so uh, there are a couple of more interesting patterns there which we will talk over a period of time but as of now let's focus on the basics of order flow right um let's try to 
understand what to observe from the order flow charts on a day to day basis that is the topic here and uh, so we'll be we'll be observing many things uh, on a day to day basis let it be any uh, any uh, let it be any symbols let it be crude or let it be gold or let it be nifty let it be bank or let it be reliance or lupin so no matter what uh, what we'll be mostly looking here is we'll be looking for a strong auction what kind of auction is prevailing whether it's a strong auction is prevailing or a weak auction is prevailing what kind of volatility is going on in the markets right so how do you understand which is a high volatile candle which is a low volatile candle and what kind of auction is going on is it an initiative auction or a responsive auction or what kind of positioning is happening whether any delta unwinding is happening or a delta positioning is happening uh, these are the routine things you have to look on day to day basis from an intraday player perspective or from a scalping perspective or what kind of liquidity is happening in the markets uh, is the liquidity flow is really good or if the liquidity flow is uh, uh, is not much is low volume transaction is happening um, uh, that that usually shows a uh, low liquidity transactions and uh, are there any trap buyers or trap sellers is going on or exhaustion high or exhaustion low these are the exhaustion high and exhaustion low are mostly because of the stop hunting happen you are seeing lot of zero liquidity zones where the order flow will be printing lot of zeros uh, are there any uh, such zeros are getting printed and where is your high volume area and low volume area so uh, based on this uh, these are some of the uh, setup of principles we are going to observe and uh, other than that um, um, uh, next week we will be discussing another couple of parameters right which will another 5 to 10 parameters which we will be monitoring on day to day basis in today section we are going to discuss only these uh, 10 principles and another 5 uh, to 10 principles will be adding up so all the trading strategies are built on this core 10 to 20 trading principles so uh, if you learn to understand uh, what kind of uh, flow we are seeing in for the day you will be able to strategize uh, when to enter into the trade when to exit into the when, when to exit the trades you will have a fair idea once you learn the key core principles of order flow um, that that's what helps you to observe order flow for any kind of trading instruments right so we'll do one thing we'll take a 15 minute break here and uh, we come back again by 325 and we'll we'll discuss about all these uh, key core principles so these key core principles are very much it, it sets the basics basic foundation study for observing any order flow charts right until then i'll be on mute once we come back we'll talk about all these concepts in detail so let's start the session here first we'll talk about the strong auction and the weak auction just like we discussed yesterday about strong auction and weak auction in uh, market profile where we discuss about the single prints right so Uh, single prints are one time framing are a sign of a strength here as well the same concept apply over here a strong auction how we can uh, differentiate is that uh, we'll try to understand how the interaction between the buyers and sellers are happening typically a strong auction will be in an auction imbalance you'll be seeing a lot of momentum buyers or momentum sellers will be will be seeing there a cluster of momentum buying or a cluster of momentum selling is a sign of a strong auction and typically you'll be seeing a high one time framing high volume and high delta all these are sign of a stronger auctions a weaker auction is something like an you'll be seeing an overlap in the price rotations typically low volume or a low delta so these are the signs of a weaker auction these are the again core foundation principles of order flow and uh, if you look into the uh, charts here you can see the one time framing is happening what is one time framing it continuously makes an in up trend it continuously makes lower uh, i mean higher lows continuously make higher lows continuously make higher lows continuously makes higher lows keeps on going up so this auction is considered as a stronger auction where it, it comes in the form of a one time framing whereas if you look into the weaker auctions you look into the weaker auctions here the weaker auction so this is again a sign of a stronger auction which is where the one time framing down is happening the price is one time framing down so it's see that one time framing down continuously making uh, uh, higher lows sorry uh, lower uh, highs continuously making the lower highs lower highs 
and lower highs again, lower highs again. Finally, the one-time swing came to a break. So these are the signs of a, a strong auctions on the downside. But if you look into the weaker auctions, the weaker auctions typically you'll be finding a lot of uh, rotations. You can see overlapping, kind of overlapping, kind of overlapping, overlapping, again overlapping, overlapping. It it went down again, overlapping. So these are signs of uh, weaker auctions where you will be seeing in very less delta here. The delta was 63, 149, 42, and 85, minus 73. So these are signs that nobody is in control in the markets. And typically more the overlapping you're going to see, more the weaker auctions it's supposed to be. Next comes the volatility. And uh, volatility is not an uptrend or a downtrend. It, it doesn't talk about the market direction. Volatility is nothing but the range. So we, on a high volatile days, usually the trading range will be higher. So something like if it is five minute charts, so five minute charts, you can say like these are low volatile uh, candles. So these are low volatile candles because the range in that five minute chart is very less. All of a sudden you might be seeing in a uh, big downtrending candle where the volatility is very high compared to the uh, previous candlestick ranges. This candlestick range is relatively high. So that's why we say like the volatility is really higher. So volatility, the high volatility doesn't mean like high volume, right? So that is something related to liquidity. Volume is something related to liquidity there. So high volatility doesn't mean high volume. Even uh, with a low volume, we can, we can see a high volatile situations usually arises in, when there is a news base event is there, even the market could drop out with a low volume also, right? There are days we had seen uh, two days breakout has been happened with, with a very, very low volume. Generally market uh, opens uh, casually and it, it breaks two day low, but at a lower volume. So low volume also market could break. It could show some high volatility. Usually in a high volatile situations, you will be seeing a higher trading range. And in a low, uh, if you are seeing a low trading range, you will be say like it's a low volatile situations. So typically I would like to show an example from the Bitcoin charts. So the Bitcoin charts where uh, to, to explain this, Bitcoin daily charts will help you out. So trading view. We can explain with Bitcoin charts and uh, the US markets how the bull markets, in a bull market, you'll be mostly uh, seeing low volatile uh, uptrend, which is followed by in a bear market, you'll be completely dominated by uh, bigger uh, range candles. So first, let me take an example from uh, S&P 500, the US markets uh, index, SPX 500. Let's go and check the daily candles. So if you're looking into the daily candles, you can see uh, this pattern emerges throughout the entire uptrend. So compress. You can see the range was very slow and steady ranges. So you can see small, it, it takes a long time to come to an uptrend. It's taking a long time here, long time here. Long, the entire journey is uh, taking a lot of time to uh, come to a certain level. And you can see a lot of small, 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 small candles. The range is pretty small up to here. And on a downside journey, you can see the volatility is getting increased. The one and two and three or five, five days, we are down back below multi-day lows. Right Again, here again, another example where the range was increasing. The range was increasing on our beer markets directions, right? So uh, those are the characteristic of a beer markets. Most of the beer markets are dominated by high volatile downtrends, right? So even it, it can happen on the upside also. That is why I'm going to show you Bitcoin charts. So if you look into Bitcoin charts, BTC USD, you can see high volatile uptrends also happening. Those are that, that is where the bull market, most of the bull market ends with the high volatile uptrends. So the, where the range will be every day, it will be exciting day. Market will be closing still 1% or 2% 
or five percentage, but the days range will be ten percentage or twenty percentage. So it will be very much energetic uh, uptrend, high volatile uptrend followed by high volatile downtrends. Okay, that's what uh, the Bitcoin uh, showed up. And uh, lately, you can see uh, the Bitcoins, the initial phases. You can see a low volatile uh, trends where the range was initially lower. But as the market keeps going up, it started showing high volatile in this space. High volatile uptrend followed by a high volatile downtrend. That is what it is. Um, it happened so far. And again, volatility also moves in cycle. High volatility moves to low volatility. You can see a phase of low volatility. Dullness, boringness in this band. This is almost, uh, this entire phase was almost three months. Nothing was happening. Market was totally compressed in Bitcoin. And finally, it started breaking down, and still it is moving in a low volatile. If you still ask me, still the the downtrend is going on with the low volatility. So, what kind of volatility we are in, which is good to observe from the auto flow charts also. So, high volatile zones are defined by bigger range bars. That the day the candle range will be very much bigger, and the lower ranges are where the low volatile situations are. On top of this volatility, we have a one more strategy called momentum auction reversal. That is a uh, that is one more uh, uh, reversal setup, which I'm going to show you how it looks like. I have a video also. I recorded a video here. Let me check out. I think possibly I done this on. Maybe this. No, it's a different pattern. This is a kind of a trap by a trap. So this thing is I keep this. This is a different setup. Which I want to talk about is one of the signature traits. Mm. One more day where I recorded about that momentum auction reversal, or maybe I can spot out from the order flow chart itself. Nifty, it happened a couple of days back. It happened on. Uh, when exactly? Yeah, it happened on 9th of Jan. So let me go back to 9th of Jan. You can see here initially price was dropping down. And here we got a momentum uh, auction reversal setup where the volatility was really big and it bounces back. So let me try to show. So the time was around, let me try to simulate if possible. The time was around 12.44 and probably around 12.44 we got the momentum auction reversal on 9th of, on 9th of Jan. So let me try to simulate the market activity. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to disconnect the data here already disconnected so I'm going to remove all the other charts because it's going to take a lot of memory when you are running a playback when you're running a playback it's better to close all the other charts keep only what is necessary maybe I'm gonna keep uh, nifty uh, nifty profile charts and nifty um, order flow this time the other things I'm gonna close I'm gonna close everything Everything I'm going to close. And I'm going to go to playback connection. Connection, playback. So first of all, to, to allow playback, uh, you have to go to uh, settings. You have to go to tools. You have to go to options. There are two key settings you have to do. 
from the options you have to go to market data in the from the options and you have to enable um, enable market recording this has to be enabled again show tick replay these two settings has to be enabled and this feature is not there in nt7 because nt7 doesn't store bid and ask prices whereas nt8 stores the bid and ask prices so that is why you can exactly replay the market uh, information whereas nt7 doesn't uh, exactly replay the market information whereas nt8 since it stores the bid and ask uh, data points you can uh, exactly able to simulate the market uh, scenarios how exactly the market moved will be able to move at the same pace okay so once this setup is over come back to the charts this is the playback i want to simulate on january 9th it's january 9th right January 9th. Yeah, it's January 9th. So I'm going to replace January 9th auction. First, let me start the auction. to play yeah so the auction started i have to speed up the auction so that i'll move to around 1244 is where the moment of exhaustion happened so i'm running at a uh, 100x speed i'm going to slow down around 12:44 at 12 uh, around 12 o'clock i'll slow down from there onwards we'll look into it so usually uh, we are in a 5 minute charts you can see that the usual uh, volume the lower uh, is what you are seeing the volume here it was 1800 lots 1000 lots right so my if you uh, observe relatively the relative volume is that um, most of the uh, decent volume will be about 2000 levels 2000 level is what uh, we can uh, 2000 lots in a 5 minute candle is what a decent volume anything less than that anything less than 1500 volume you can call that as a low volume so low volume was taking place you can see only 800 lots got traded in this candle another so far only 72 342 so another 500 another 600 lots got traded the second candle 715 lots got traded in the low candle so all these are low volume candles you can see a lot of low volume candles are happening and markets are getting into sideways mode this is a weaker auction this is not a stronger auction this is a totally a weaker auction and uh, lower the volume means lower the liquidity is there the the buyer and seller sellers interaction is not good that uh, more the buyers and sellers interaction it will turn out into a business uh, it it turns into a good volume but you can see here as the auction is completely getting into a sideways till to a 12 o'clock i'm going to reduce the speed of auction by 50 times maybe even by so now sellers are able to come up still the volume is low so the volume is relatively low 1260 lots means we can say like it's a low liquidity those are low liquidity zones markets are not finding good liquidity so again one more break is coming in so you see a lot of uh, seller breaks are coming in So this is what I'm going to stop here. So stop here. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of selling happen, right? So all are momentum sellers, which you are able to see from this one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a big range candle also, right? So 
when you are seeing that kind of big range candle you see the uh, volume volume was 2916 it's a good volume it's a good volume selling also happened good selling happened the volatility was very big so the volatility you see the volatility it's almost uh, uh, went down how many points 1866 that that we can term it as a good volume but then at the same time it also got stopped it's a, it also got stopped it's almost 25 point range that range is a bigger range because previous candle will are having five point range eight point range or a 10 point range that is the kind of range which was going on over there the volatility was big the volatility was big so momentum sellers are there delta is big volume is relatively decent it's it's more than 2500 or 3000 look at the next candle despite all the sellers effort the buyers are able to take control uh, we got a positive delta so that is fine and uh, the volume is more or less 1500 plus which is a kind of a stopping volume all the sellers effect who was the sellers present there they are pushing the market down with a really big volatility and uh, the ne- very next candle you are getting an inside bar and that candle is closing positive it is a sign that it is a we, we call that as a momentum auction reversal right so momentum auction reversal is one of the stopping zones where you, you find a scalping opportunity to fade towards the vwap levels so by this time if you measure the vwap levels are somewhere around so around 10880 levels so that difference is your uh, uh, is your uh, uh, is your target zone so the 10880 is your target zone so at times market could go a little bit higher but that's fine so once you're done with the vwap levels you should be out of the game or probably that vwap levels you can use it as a partial proofing booking zone and you should be out of the game here so let me simulate the auction further i'll i'll, I'll go down and i'll run at 20x probably at 10x i'll run it so your stop loss is below this reference level so maybe i'll draw a reference level showing the stops so this is your stop zone the candle low is your stop zone so i'm going to pass here i'm going to explain first of all you see this one is there is a one here that is supposed to be a zero that is uh, we call it as what anybody able to remember i mean morning i said um unfinished business yeah it's unfinished business first thing market will do is that it goes and clears that reference because there is a momentum auction is a um, auction reversal is also going on so that that is the only reason i said like not every momentum uh, is a selling momentum so there, there is a sellers are there but then all of a sudden the next bar you are getting an inside bar and that selling momentum is happening with a uh, strong volatility all the seller efforts are counter attacked by a Uh, with the low volume buyers right so not a low volume but a decent volume there uh, all the sellers effect has been stopped there that is what it gives you mean reversion opportunity to fade towards the 10880 levels which we discussed in the slack also when the opportunity came i posted in the slack as well and now i'll simulate the auction so there was one more unfinished uh, business is over there So that unfinished business has been cleared. So these are fast trades. Usually, the the, the target will be achieved in uh, anywhere between fifteen to thirty minutes. You're out of the game. And same momentum auction reversal happens on a hourly time frame also. But then you need to have a sufficient data set to take a, such kind of trades. you see that further volatility is usually the market goes up with low volatile candles low volatile candles low volatile candles but if you look at this range this range will be big volatile candle <coughs> market test this you are out of the game but yes at times market could do even more <coughs> but still you, sh- you should be aware that um <coughs> when you are done you should be out of the game that's it it's only a pure scalping trades at times these momentum auction reversal could be a days low also right so not necessarily to be every day but uh, at times it could be 
base low also so i will call this as momentum auction reversal it's one of the key signature trading patterns momentum auction reversal zone right so that's how the market moves it it's moving in a one time framing fashion it's fine but later on what happened in the market is that there was a steep fall came in and there was a steep bounce back also came later on this is on 9th of uh, january activity i mean uh, two trading days back <coughs> i'm going to pass the session here and we'll go back and talk about the other context sir one question like how to identify the strong auction in the order flow what are the parameters for oh, that the parameters what you have to be identifying here is uh, you should be having an, a strong uh, uh, volatility this can be anything uh, bigger so uh, most of them you, you, you might see this pattern like the market will be dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping one of the day you'll be seeing a strong drop and the very next it will be combining with a huge volume also you see that's volume is a key here the volume should be anywhere between uh, 2500 plus should be 3000 or 4500 that kind of uh, lots in nifty uh, this is in in terms of relative terms you have to identify which is the biggest volume so in terms of nifty anything about 3000 or 3500 or 4500 is a big volume volume should be big it should be high volume high volatility candle also high volatility candle with a uh, high volume and a bigger negative delta on the downside if it's on the upper side it should be a high positive delta the delta was closely 886 minus 886 it's a bigger delta right so when come to when comparing in nifty in relative terms at the same time you can also see that the next candle is counter attack uh, by a positive candle it's an inside bar it should be an inside bar that is a uh, one more key it should be an inside bar and uh, it doesn't matter whether it is a positive delta or a negative delta it doesn't matter so uh, usually positive delta will be showing up so there will be bias will be showing up uh, usually it doesn't matter even if there is a negative delta also it's fine but it should be a, a positive candle Uh, the delta doesn't matter over here but the volume here should be at least uh, half of the uh, what it happened over here. half our complete uh, volume transaction should happen over here so these are the signs that uh, it's a momentum auction reversal this strategy is built on top of the volatility volatility and delta it's uh, the two key element we have to watch out here thank you sir yeah yeah and usually the target destination is towards the vwap at times the momentum auction reversal could be the base bottom also and it's again uh, go back to the charts and we'll discuss some of the other basics so these are the examples for high volatility candles so where you can see the range here are pretty bigger and the range here are pretty bigger this is one of the uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, setups we have in the future we'll be having more uh, trades based upon this initiative versus responsive action so the initiative and responsive action can be come in the form of three types in any kind of market situations it, uh, it, it will be initiative responsive and initiative something like there will be initiative reaction just to find the liquidity i sometime back i explained the jp morgan example right jp morgan if they want to uh, buy a nifty contract initially they will be moving the price they are initiating their direction right so they are they are taking initiative positions in the markets to find the liquidity once the market finds its liquidity market will be moving in a sideways action so there uh, they will be taking in responsive trades where the uh, once the fine market is finding liquidity automatically sellers will come for a sell and uh, they will be on the counter party side they will be taking limit orders and uh, there will be a responsive sell sellers there so you can uh, um, you can find a responsive selling activity so initiative initially it will be a initiative uh, reaction where jp morgan is initiating the Uh, uptrend to find the liquidity 
once they find the liquidity automatically they get into a responsive mode where the liquidity uh, is met where the buyers and sellers comes for uh, collating where they find a lot of sellers active sellers so these are zones where you will be seeing a lot of aggressive sellers but uh, the uh, jp morgan will be con continuously absorbing all those uh, orders in the form of limit order that is what we can call it as a responsive uh, uh, it's a, what they will be doing is more of a responsive buying is what they will be done uh, doing there uh, once the all the liquidity has been completed again they will be doing a initiative auction over there so just to find one more uh, liquidity zones just to find one more liquidity zones right so uh, that's how the market uh, moves in a trending fashion initiative to responsive and responsive to initiative and uh, next comes the responsive to responsive responsive to responsive are completely uh, it's not a sideways market there are two differences between consolidating markets and a responsive uh, trading markets you will be finding a range here market will be when, when, it, when the price moves up to the upper band you will find big buyers coming into the markets but despite that market used to fall when it is coming to the lower range again market turns up with the at the end you will be seeing an uh, big sellers so big buyers will be coming over here and big sellers and again big buyers at the day high i mean uh, at the at the range high again buyers show up big buyers and again price goes down we'll be seeing a big sellers so this is our responsive to responsive action will be there market will be still moving in a in a range bound mode completely market will be moving in a range bound mode it is responsive to responsive this is where market finds most of the uh, business over there so we can find that responsive buyers and responsive sellers are present uh, probably we will talk about similar uh, uh, strategies by next to week or so uh, when we are talking about uh, when we are talking about uh, responsive activity right so that is one more strategy which we talk about on responsive to responsive mostly we'll be looking for a breakout with the before the breakout there will be a lot of signatures we'll be able to find out on a responsive to responsive the third comes the initiative to initiative it's something like a momentum auction reversal it's kind of an uh, there will be initiative selling followed by initiative buying that's what it talks about initiative to initiative mostly you'll be seeing a lot of momentum sellers uh, momentum sellers will be coming in over here and mostly with high volatility followed by a uh, inside bar and we used to keep moving up that's something like a momentum auction reversal momentum auction reversal which we seen in the previous example is nothing but an example for a initiative to initiative where it is nothing but a, you see a initiative sellers followed by a initiative buyers pushing the price on the upper side so uh, momentum auction reversal is one strategy which is related to this uh, um, this v shape recovery or initiative to initiative initially you find initiative sellers followed by initiative buyers taking an counter action over there so initiative action you can always find in in terms of an uh, whenever you are seeing initiative action high volume with directional delta right so that's what you will be able to see that when initiative sellers are coming in uh, you will be seeing a very high volume uh, transactions happening over there the volume transaction will be relatively high and the delta also very uh, relatively bigger there you will be seeing a bigger delta over there that's how an initiative reactions will be right so wherever you play you are seeing a high volume wherever you are seeing a directional delta means price also went up the delta also went up uh, it's a bigger delta bigger volume bigger price activity that is a initiative action right whereas in a responsive action the responsive action you'll be finding this pattern kind of mostly uh, let's say the the price is going up to a certain level and it is uh, rotating back where at the uh, at this high where you'll be seeing a buyer over here you'll be seeing a high volume high volume transaction over there a high volume uh, transaction but you'll be seeing a reverse delta so price will be selling off you see the price price will be going down but uh, the delta will be positive delta will be positive you will be seeing a lot of buyers at that level so that is what we call it as a responsive auction so uh, over a period of time you should be able to bifurcate whether what kind of auction is going on is it an initiative auction or a responsive auction you should be able to do that most of the times uh, institutions do uh, do this kind of methodology this methodology is called as an absorption 
where and uh, it, it it's where at the day high you will be seeing a high volume but despite that market used to fall down or at the day low and the price is coming down you will be seeing an uh, you'll be you'll be seeing an uh, high seller volume but despite the higher seller volume you will be seeing that market keeps going up this again this responsive auction i'm going to show you one more uh, example um where the responsive auction we call that as a trap buyer or a trap seller right so um, i want to show you some live examples i guess i have some live examples so here is the video here which i am going to play now so you can see here the, the price was coming down previously the market was hitting the day low when it was hitting the day low what you can see here is that you can see some good sellers good amount of sellers 1139 contract this is bank nifty this is bank nifty chart 5 minute charts what you are seeing is a, a big selling activity was happening and then it got stopped you see that below that only uh, the 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 price went only four four boxes lower right so uh, when the price is moving up and down up and down and it's showing a big delta and uh, let's say the price went only four ticks and it's back up that, that candle completes the when the next candle opens here that is your entry point the stop loss exactly at this level exactly at 27105 uh, in bank nifty that is a 15 point stops that is a roughly a 15 uh, 12 to 15 point stop in bank nifty or in a worst case it can go to 20 points right who knows maybe markets bank nifty is volatile so anywhere between uh, 15 to 20 points we are going to get that is a good uh, selling uh, good signature trades to counter trend this uh, trap buyers or trap sellers so what you are seeing is a responsive auction this auction is what responsive auction where the volume is relatively big 2888 contracts in bank nifty is considered as an uh, not big but it's a decent volume i would say the decent volume it's high volume it's something like i said the price goes to a low and then it reverses where at the days low you'll be seeing a high selling volume high selling volume so that that's the selling volume over here a big selling volume i'm going to continue this uh, video so you can see that there is a big seller that's what i am i'm just showing it out This is somewhere around twelve thirty-two on third of January. Third of January. This is third of January. The stops is very tighter over here. Your uh, as usual, the expectation is towards the VWAP, or at times it could do even more bigger also. can see a lot of momentum buyers coming down there we have speed up a bit again you can see a lot of zeros all these are some stops would have been getting hunted means price will again uh, have the capability to retrace back always they will fill these zeros those zeros are likely to be revisited in the intraday itself so when uh, when a big selling activity is happening at the day low right so you can see that previously some big sell that big selling activity has been spotted over here the comment was like big sellers at day low so temporary scalping buying opportunity but still it is unsecured low even uh, even though a big selling opportunity is happening at the day low 
right? And then uh, uh, you can see a couple of four four layers, and then the price started. Uh, the candle ends. It's a scalping opportunity. Once the scalping opportunity is done, you should be quick to end the game. You should be quick. Once again, you should be quickly out of the game because price could have the tendency. It's the low is not a good low. We call that as a bad low because it's a it's happened with a big volume. So usually, once you are out of once you're done with the game, you can also expect this to happen back. So. in your long trades you will have a very tight opportunity to take a mean reversion trades once um, once if your stop is done you should be out of the game there otherwise you you will be in under a big trouble because the, that is not a secure low at all if it is a secure low we will be having a low we don't have a big volume in, in that candle at all right so let me continue the trade here my comment was bivar still the day low is not secure it is a bad low the what are the low we had is a bad low uh, that's why once if there is any quick uptrend you should be uh, uh, you should be getting out of the trade there once you're done with the vwap you should be out of the game This is third of January, right? So I'm gonna stop here, and I'll show you how the day is uh, uh, on a one-minute chart. How uh, how the on a five-minute chart, how the response was. It it went up some 120 points from there, and completely reversed all its gains. So this is on third of January. Go to third of January in Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty. A five-minute candle. It looks like something like this. Third of January. So here is the third of January. So this candle is what we got the bigger volume. The volume was bigger, right? And uh, uh, it it happened at this level. So at this level, the big volume came. The big volume came. Your stop was here. The stop was here. So big seller happened over here. Big seller tend to happen over here. that's a scalping opportunity right so once you're done with that get out of the game um, you make your 70 points 80 points 100 points whatever it is get out of the game but market has a tendency to revisit back market has a tendency to revisit back so um, your entry point is over here uh, take that that comes with a very tight stop um, if it is bank something like bank nifty your stop will be anywhere between 15 to 20 points If something like nifty your stops will be anywhere between 5 to 10 points stops with a good risk reward ratio trades right and that's a kind of an intraday trade setups usually it in a in a month usually you will be able to spot some three to four setups in in only in nifty alone or in bank nifty alone so when it is happening you should be on a high high alert you have to be a fast trader over here continuously looking for such information When that information happens you should be on a high alert to address those trades it's it's a fast trade fast scalping trades but if you don't have time to sit into the in front of the monitor and uh, doing all these things better stay away from doing all these things it's meant it's mostly meant for fast traders right and uh, okay coming back so that is whatever we seen there is nothing but a responsive auction the responsive action is where a high volume with high reversal delta happened it's it's kind of an absorption uh, initially it is absorbed by the buyers and buyers take control but later uh, those levels are most likely to be revisited back if it is happening at the day is low so again that is an interesting uh, setup which you can find very frequently in the markets though, but only you care has to be taken there these kinds of uh, responsive action if it is happening on the expiry day or one day before expiry you should ignore it because mostly there could be a rollovers so they might they not be an responsive buyers or a responsive sellers they could be because that could happen because of a rollovers so those levels may not uh, revisit at all so 
care has to be taken that uh, you're not practicing this on uh, one day before expiry or a two day before expiry or on, uh, on the day of expiry. You should not practice this because rollovers will be getting active in the markets um, on last two days of expiry. So um, you should not play the trap buyer trap seller concept on the day of expiry or one day before expiry. Next comes high volume area. Uh, high volume typically means higher participation in the activity, um, higher participation. Uh, it, it means uh, we are looking into a high liquid zone. We are, we are mostly dealing with a liquid, uh, liquidity zone where if, the, if a high volume will be a result of, let's say there are more limit orders there. Let's say there are more limit orders over there. A flood of limit orders over there. So if somebody want to place a market order, and again, I have to place a market order. They have to place a market order to eat everything. Let's say this is 20 lots, and this is 100 lots, and this is 200 lots. Let's say this is 600 lots. So there are a lot of liquidity sitting over here. Maybe if the pending order is uh, pending order here is only 10 lots, the pending order should be something like 20 lots. So these are low liquidity zones. These are low liquidity zones. If the price is moving here, it will result in a more volume. If the price further moves up and it, it, it moves in the zone, it will be resulting in only 40, 30 lots would have been transacted over here. Right? So whereas here, the transaction would be somewhere around, let's say, total of 1,100 lots, 1,100 lots. So when the price is traveling in a high liquidity zone, that means a flood of limit orders are there. It usually results in a uh, the all these these are high liquidity zones, which results in a higher volume, which results in a higher participation activity. Right? At times, what happens? There will be a high liquidity zone. There will be a high liquidity zone where a flood of orders will be there. Uh, let's say 100 and 200 and 300. And let's say some 500, something like that. A lot of big liquidity is sitting on the upper side. But what happens is that when the, when the price is going up, the price is going up and touching this 100, they are trying to take 20 contracts. They try to take 20 contracts. And then seller comes and push the market down. Again, they try to move towards the liquidity zone. They try to do some 10 contract transaction. Again, market falls down. So all these are poor facilitation of a trade. Even with the high, when they are reaching the high liquidity zones, because of the poor facilitation of a trade, it could still result. It could result in a uh, because of poor facilitation, it could result in a uh, lower participation. But if the if the buyers are really serious, they will be triggering this. They'll be triggering this. They'll be triggering this, which will result in a high participation activity, which will result in a higher transaction of the volume. Right. So especially when they are hitting the liquidity zone, it will result in a higher volume. So you can see here the higher volume which is coming. Uh, this is on uh, 28th of December. 28th of December, you can see that institutional activity was happening there. You can see 1,100 lots got traded over here. 1,000 lots got traded over here. A good liquidity flow is coming in. In fact, uh, 400 lots on the buying side, 300 plus lots, 200 plus lots. So all these are a result of a high liquidity. We are, we are traveling in, a, the price is traveling in a high liquidity zones. That's what it means. When the price is traveling in high liquidity zones and that is resulting in a higher volume. That means a good transaction is happening among the buyers and sellers. The buyers and sellers agree to do a good facilitation of trade is happening over there. A low volume area means lower participation activity lack of liquidity zones right so a low volume area can be like as i said uh, um, there'll be only 10 lots here and 20 lots here all these are limit orders all these are uh, limit orders and maybe there are no liquidity at all so maybe this is the illiquid markets will be mostly looking like this you, you don't have any liquidity over here so next liquidity will be available in this band where five lots Again, some 10 lots will be sitting as a limit order and 20 lots will be sitting as a limit order. Again, you'll be having a liquidity gap. 
right? So, so again, let's say 10 lots here and the 10 lots here. So if somebody punches 100 lots, what generally happens is that price will be traveling and somebody punches 100 lots here. First, they will eat this liquidity. They will eat this liquidity. And you'll find a gap. The next trade will be happening over here because he's punching 100 market orders, 100 lots of market orders. Then you'll be finding this. They will be eating this liquidity. And they will be eating this liquidity. Because, because the liquidity is low over here, they'll be able to push the price faster and uh, markets are uh, still traveling in a low volume area that will result in lower participation and that will be low you will be finding a low volume happening at that level if you look into the order flow order flow the price will be moving relatively faster but the transaction of volume will be very less because price is moving in a low liquidity zone whereas if it is a thick liquidity zone Let's say, let us assume that if it is a thick liquidity zone, a lot of flood of uh, limit orders are there, right? So you will be seeing that price falls down, again it moves up. Again, price falls down, again moves up. Same if somebody is punching the 100 lots, um, it, it, it will take a lot of time to uh, get an execution over there. You, you'll be finding uh, that 20 orders get executed, again price comes down, again the market moves up, again 20 orders get filled. So you'll be seeing that kind of uh, set of in a, in a low liquidity zone, usually price travels faster. It's tough to penetrate a high liquidity zone. It's tough to penetrate a high liquidity zone if somebody is uh, punching because a uh, huge volume is sitting in, the, in terms of limit order. Huge volume is sitting in terms of limit order. And uh, the price has to eat up, again goes down. Again eat up, goes down. Again eat up, goes down. Eat up, again goes down. So this is where the iceberg order comes in. Uh, in iceberg order, what happens is the institutions, they will create a ceiling effect. The institutions will be creating a ceiling effect. They flood with a lot of limit orders. Let's say uh, 10,000 lots of uh, limit order over here. And uh, another 5,000 lots of limit order, uh, one more limit order over here. So they put a ceiling effect. So means uh, when the price is traveling towards this, towards the liquidity zone, uh, your delta will be positive. Your delta will be positive because aggressive buyers are pushing the market up. But since there are a lot of flood of limit orders are sitting on the upper side, um, all our uh, limit sell orders, LMT sell orders, limit sell orders, they, they flooded with the limit sell orders. So they try to uh, punch up all small, small buyers would have been uh, pushing the price through. Uh, the price, Again, sellers take control. They try to push through, but since there are flood of limit orders are there, again, it gets sell through. Again, they, they try to, you can see this pattern. Market will be mostly trading sideways and then uh, lately sellers will take control over here in absorption markets. Or, or what could happen here is that uh, uh, once all the liquidity is over, once this, all this liquidity is over, once they are eaten up all these liquidity, usually market does a spike and uh, later on sellers will they try and tend to take control. So when the market is moving in absorption area, you have to be wait for someone to initiate a trade. Uh, what you have to do is that when you are seeing absorption, you will be seeing a lot of positivity. The delta will be positive. Delta will be continuously positive. But market will be moving in a sideways. Market will be moving in a sideways fashion. When you are seeing uh, the delta absorption is happening. That's what we call as an absorption. All the buyers are getting absorbed by the limit sell orders over here. That's how an iceberg order will be mostly looks like. Uh, typically, what you have to do is, you never know. Either... The market can fall directly like this or once all the liquidity is over, they try to push, back, push it back. By that time, all the small uh, traders will be losing all their energy. And finally, with uh, sellers will try to take a control. So you should wait for someone to take a control in the markets. That you'll be able to come in the form of a momentum. When uh, uh, So that is how a price travels in a high liquidity area. This is We call that as a ceiling effect. Or we also call this as an absorption happening in the markets. And at times you can see the low volumes are usually nothing but a result of a stop hunting or a lack of liquidity. You're usually seeing a lot of zeros over there. Or even at times because of algos or aggression from the market participants, these usually results in the low volume transactions. Again, liquidity uh, is another key interesting thing. 
um, which as a order flow trader you have to figure it out whether the day we are, what you are facing is a high liquid transaction or low liquid transaction we already talked about enough about liquidity but higher the liquidity is higher the liquidity is higher the interaction between the buyers and sellers right so we already seen in the previous example i shown you that uh, uh, there is a big flood of limit orders over here when there is a big flood of limit orders from the institutions when the buyers are coming and interacting and they are eating all the liquidity which will result in uh, higher volume also there will be more interaction from the buyers and sellers that which also eventually end up in higher volume over there whereas in illiquid markets in illiquid markets they will tend to find uh, uh, the illiquid markets will trend until they find good liquidity zone this is a, again a classical example from jp morgan where jp morgan pushes the price up until they are finding the liquidity zone once they find the liquidity zone they will become responsive and more uh, um, well, market is finding its liquidity zone then uh, uh, these are the zones are illiquid markets illiquid markets it's easy to travel through those prices whereas in highly liquid zones it's tough to penetrate a lot of time has to spent over there in high liquid zones to eat up all those uh, limit orders all those pending limit orders and then once the, all the pending limit orders are done and again institutions jack up the prices from there on again again to find the uh, high liquidity zones a zero liquidity zones uh, with higher momentum acts like a key support or resistance level in a very short term but eventually the zero liquidity zones with the lower momentum generally gets filled so again this is one one more thing you have to watch out for so zero liquidity always with lower momentum generally gets filled most of the zero liquidity zones which is happening because of stop hunting gets filled right so there are certain zero liquidity uh, there are certain zero liquidity Uh, where you can find let's say momentum sellers i'm finding in momentum sellers over here so momentum sellers were, are here this this band and uh, there is i'm seeing a zero over here maybe there could be one more zero it is not a stop hunting but it is momentum selling maybe momentum selling is happening here and uh, momentum selling is happening here and the momentum selling is happening here where i am seeing in between the momentum seller i am seeing couple of zeros here zeros and zeros <coughs> that will act like a resistance zone that will act like a resistance zone that band will act like a resistance zone <coughs> where the price falls and next time price is coming to this level again you will be getting a rejection there uh, that is these points are your entry scalping points again these points are your entry scalping points so again understanding about the liquidity the zero liquidity provides uh, if it is happening with the higher momentum here in this case we are talking about a higher momentum here a higher momentum here and higher momentum here and higher momentum here that is what if you look into the bid ask imbalance all these are you'll be seeing only red spot only in this zones you'll be seeing a red spot in this zones and uh, price uh falls down a little bit and then they mean reverse to that location you can have a very tight band stops uh they you can see a good amount of rejection happening at that level so that you can use it to capture on again uh, 15 to 20 30 40 points i mean usually in terms of nifty 20 to 25 is the ideal option for uh, to initiate that kind of trades right so this is if it is happening with a higher momentum if it is not happening with a higher momentum let's say it's happening because of stops price is coming down and all of a sudden uh, you see that uh, you see uh, in, if you look into the order flow you'll be seeing uh, we're seeing a lot of pack of zeros here pack of zeros on both the sides all will be filled with zeros 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 and zeros and zeros and zeros if it is happening down like this because of stop trigger then uh, those liquidity zones are likely to uh, revisit back because they are kind of an intraday gaps okay we already seen one of the example which happened on last friday where the zero liquidity zones got filled from the intraday perspective itself can so these are the zero liquidity zones i'm talking about so that times you can find these kinds of zero liquidity zones that will act like your resistance zone
The next comes the delta positioning. The delta positioning is, uh, we also call that as a delta packet positioning. It uh, always arises from the initiative taken. So we already talked about initiative trades, right? So initiative trades are nothing but what? A high volume, high delta candles, um, where inside the high volume, high delta candles, if you look into it, Let's say so if you look into the order flow or from the order flow, it's tough to determine. But if, if you're looking from the delta, uh, maybe I'll show you an example. There'll be a good transaction. Let's say there is 700 buyers, so 700 sellers. Probably the, the buyers will be uh, only, uh, let's say, 15. And again, 640 sellers, 640 sellers, probably this, the buyers will be only 10. And uh, uh, let's say 1,000 uh, sellers, result is only 40 buyers. So you, you see that a pack of, a packet of uh, buyers are entering in this zone. So if you look into the delta alone, if you look at delta candles, Right. So instead of plotting the order flow bid and ask, if you look into the delta, the delta will be uh, 685 here, 685, and delta will be 620, and delta will be 960. Like you will be seeing a packet of delta, packet, packet of uh, negative delta coming in. So minus, all these are values are minus values, minus, minus. So you'll be seeing a packet of uh, delta coming over here. So these delta, uh, are nothing but the interested parties. The interested parties are onboarding over here. So what you can see is that you'll be seeing a selling activity. When the price is coming up and breaking this level, still, if you're seeing selling activity resumes that they are, that means some interested parties are still there uh, that will be acting like a kind of a resistance zone. Every time the price is trying to take this level, you'll be seeing some selling activity over here. So it means when whenever the price is trying to break, uh, the same sellers who are participated over here, the interested parties will arrive here to defend their levels. So they will be coming again, pushing that level. But that's that's what it called as a delta positioning. The participants defend those positions and add to uh, add more positions to them. So uh, that is where uh, uh, if you are finding a delta positioning and uh, next time when the price is reaching a certain level, you will be seeing a sell off. That zones has to be marked whenever you are seeing a delta positioning happens. So in this case, we move to the delta order flow charts and uh, to check whether any delta positioning happened or not. Uh, relatively, you'll be seeing a bigger skew among the buyers and sellers, and that can be spotted from the bigger delta packets. So that's why it's called as a delta packet positioning. Market will always test the delta pocket zones because it is the zone where liquidity being supplied. So market always test this zone that is there market will revisit that level but after revisiting if you are if you're seeing more sell off that means interested parties are there that means interested parties are there no matter what a delta positioning happens market always goes and revisit those zones that is for sure but once that revisit happens if you are rejecting that level that is again a kind of a trade over there your trade will be getting initiated over there the trade will be getting initiated over here when you're seeing a rejection when you're seeing a rejection you keep a stops above this level and uh, you initiate a trade towards on the downside for scalping. Okay, that's what delta positioning is all about. So you see in this uh, example, the delta positioning is happening in the form of, uh, uh, look into this band. This band is where the quantity was uh, uh, 400 buyers, 569 buyers. Again, another 200 buyers over here, 200, 300 buyers over here. So there is a packet of buyers are entering in this zone. So packet of buyers are entering in this zone. So this zone is going to be the support for the day. So uh, next time when the price is coming and revisiting back and it is bouncing back, that will be your entry point when it comes to delta packet positioning. It shows that interested parties are willing to defend at that price levels. Again, this is delta positioning on the sell side. So that you can see an uh, minus 300, minus 250, minus 212. All these are uh, interested parties. So 
whenever the next time price is rejecting this band price goes up and you're seeing a rejection there uh, that is a sign that uh, uh, the delta positional players are interested parties next come unwinding of delta delta unwinding so this delta unwinding you can able to gauge from the cumulative delta so we'll be using cumulative delta to watch out whether delta unwinding is happening or not and uh, uh, typically uh, let let's say the markets are moving up the markets are moving up the cumulative delta will be positive positive and becomes 900 900 here and it means the participants are adding up their positions on the long side and the cumulative delta becomes at, at one stage it becomes 4000 4000 and the market keeps moving up and one of the candle what happens there will be a sharp cut coming in all of a sudden you will be seeing that the entire 4000 uh, cumulative delta it becomes zero it becomes zero the 4000 whoever uh, and that means kind of a delta unwinding is happening Uh, where the sellers would have been in, only in this candle you will be seeing in 4000 uh, lots of sellers got out means some some part, participants are liquidating their positions so maybe they are not uh, um, mostly they are short term participants they are not concerned about the price when the price is breaking them uh, when breaking a certain level which these participants are not comfortable of they just unwind their trades they just unwind their trades all in a sudden you accumulate your delta uh you'll be there will be a drastic difference in your cumulative delta let's say the cumulative delta moves from 0 to 10000 0 to 10000 and all in a sudden you're seeing a uh, uh, the markets also went up all in a sudden you're seeing a market crash and your delta becomes uh, come down to 5000 that is sign that some of the players got out of their old positions they just liquidated they just unwinded uh, their old positions they are not shorts they are most likely liquidation of the older positions so which you can see in the terms of market will be the price will be falling faster at the same time the delta will be from uh, magically disappears half of the delta or most of the delta will be uh, gone to zero or uh, sub negative so those are the zones where uh, they simply liquidate their positions they are not uh, fresh shorts or so you will be seeing a lot of selling quantity but they are nothing but unwinding of the old positions that's what delta unwinding is all about and uh, next week we'll be looking into some of the examples if there are any live examples i'm able to spot i'll i'm going to record this and i'm going to show you how the delta unwinding happens so sometime back it happened in uh, nifty or bank nifty i have the charts here so if you look at the cumulative delta here in this example that is a cumulative delta yeah cumulative delta here you can see it is 2000 again minus 833 it was positive in the morning in the morning it was positive that particular day morning it was positive and all in a sudden it it went from you see that minus 15 1756 all in a sudden the next jump was 4855 negative so you see that 3141 sellers there they are most likely happening because of they are liquidating their positions and uh, a big delta unwinding is happening in the markets so they are most likely a sign of a delta liquidation the kind of delta unwinding where they just simply unwinded their positions for the day most likely they are short term traders and trap buyers and trap sellers Uh, we already uh, seen one more uh, example on uh, trapped seller where a high volume or a high seller uh, transacted at the exactly at the day's high or at the day's low at the edges at the day's edges we also term that as a bad high or a bad low it is a poor way of facilitating a trade right so price will often revisit this zone but before revisiting it also gives you good opportunity to do a scalping uh, and then um, we know you never know it it might take one hour to revisit or two hours to revisit or they may revisit the very next day but often they will come and revisit those locations right so uh, but initially if you are finding that uh, once the big selling activity is happening once let's let's say a big selling activity is happening at the day low
Maybe at the day low, you'll be finding only 16 lots got traded over here. 18 lots got traded over here. And one of these lots, it's it's transacted some 1,600 lots, which is relatively big in terms of uh, uh, Nifty or Bank Nifty. And once you started seeing that, price started uh, going down and the price is firmly back above this level, this big buyer level. All you have to do is that you have to keep a stops below this level and enter long, look for scalping opportunity. Once you're done with the scalping opportunity, you're out of the game, right? But eventually you have to understand that this, this low is a poor low. I mean, this low is a bad low or a bad high. This low is a bad low or a bad high. Eventually price will revisit back this level mostly intraday but at times if they are if they forget to fail you know, forget to revisit on the same day they will come and clear on the very next day itself but these trap buyers and trap sellers are usually the result of the poor way of facilitating a trade They're, the trade haven't properly facilitated so that means the auction is not completed price will often revisit the zone to complete the auction So one of these example here, you can see a big uh, buying activity. Price was reaching the day high, uh, and at the day high, you, you uh, after above that, you're not finding any bigger uh, volume over there. Price started going down. Price started going down, but lately, that levels got cleared later on. This activity happened on, I think, somewhere around January only. First, second of January or third of January, this kind of setup happened. This is one more example for a trap buyer where you can see the day high, 1,295 quantity. And above that only one 15 lot got traded. Price got back into this range. End of the scandal is your shot. But uh, you all, once you're done with your trade, the uh, 40, 50 point trade, um, you should get out of the trade because always price have a tendency to go and clear those uh, references. It's, a, it's an example for a trap buyers. Trap buyers and trap sellers are, it, it gives you very tight uh, trading opportunities, right? Again, this is one of our examples for a trade trap seller. So there is a trap seller uh, which was coming over here. And then uh, price you started bouncing back. But the same day, the price again revisited back again. Exhaustion high or exhaustion low. We already seen an example on this. This is nothing but they are nothing but a stopped out trades. Uh, once the stop out trades happens, things exaggerated price response at the extreme with wild swings. This is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a wild swings when the stop out is gonna happen. But those exhaustion uh, uh, market tend to take a break first. They will take a break and finally price will come and, uh, uh, for example, let's see. The price is going down and down and it is reaching the previous day's low. This is previous day's low. If there are no liquidity there, it, it, it goes and takes the next liquidity. That's why you see a price jumps really faster on the downside. And uh, many times you might witness this, you'll be finding a lot of zeros in your uh, order flow. So once this is done, there'll be a lot of wild swings happening in the markets and finally it readjusts to the wild swings and finally tend to clear all those exhaustion uh, highs are the exhaustion lows. So typically it is, it is having a characteristic of highest delta, highest volume and wildest price rotations is what you'll be able to get from uh, exhaust to uh, high or exhaust to low. Exhausted market tend to take a break first. They will take a break first and finally they tend to revisit those exhausted reference levels. This will be characterized by a zero liquidity, nothing much. So you can see a lot of liquidity trigger happening over here. These are the result of uh, stop hunting trades. So which these levels are, uh, market have a tendency to go and repair back all those uh, zeros. The Friday example in Nifty is a classical one. Yeah, 
if you have any questions you can ask questions otherwise we are done for the day the next uh, order flow sessions will be talking more on um, absorption initiative action and responsive action and how to spot a key re reference level and key support level that is what we are going to discuss in the next week session but the one which is discussed they are the basic foundational principles uh, to most of the trading strategies which we are going to discuss any questions here are i am on mute any questions if we see in the live market we may get the questions more than yes you. yes yes but these are the foundational basics when you watching the live markets um, uh, initially it takes a little bit of settling time to understand what is liquidity what is volatility how because all those live decisions are really faster decisions so market won't give you enough time market only gives you or hardly 5 to 3 minutes of time to decide whether to enter this trade or not so uh, it requires a sharp mental skill to play this game you only you have to be a fast trader uh, there to understand all these uh, things so these are the key principles which helps you to put you in the right directions okay and one more thing can you show the initiative buying and responsive buying in market profile not in order flow market profile has a different uh, way of looking into initiative and responsive so uh, what the theory says is that um, let's say this is my value area right so it's something similar but they they always look in terms of value area so this is my value area for today's value area or yesterday's value area and if somebody is if the price is initiated from here above the value area they call it as a initiative auction right so our uh, this is initiative buying they call it as a initiative buying initiative buying or whereas when the price is within the value area they are pushing it down below yesterday's value area then they call it as a initiative selling but that is too theoretical that, that's why i tend to avoid those terminologies but it's a good to know concept so initiative buying like when within the value area they are pushing the price up it is initiative buying within the value area they are pushing it down they call it as a initiative selling whereas when come to responsive buying or a responsive selling say this is my value area assume that this is my yesterday's value area value area price went down price went down from here somebody is pushing back into the value area we call it as a responsive buying so this is responsive activity buyers are responding when the price goes down below the value area buyers are responding they are doing a counter auction so that's what also that is what it's called as a responsive buying similarly when the price goes outside the value area sellers responded and they pushed the price back into the value area we call that as a responsive uh, selling so generally uh, initiative buying is nothing but a trend following responsive auction is nothing but a mean reversion trades counter counter trades the same thing is there in order flow also the concept is same the only thing is there in market profile they use the terminology in relative to value area let's say the price opens gap down and all of a sudden uh, mean reversion happens they say like responsive buyers are in control that's what they say but uh, i don't use the terminology much because it's uh, already we are dealing with enough complexity this will going to put you in more complexity in that so responsive buying and responsive selling are more of a theoretical stuff whereas in order flow they have a responsive to responsive uh, initiative to initiative initiative responsive initiative those are actually related to trading strategies whereas in uh, market profile as of now i don't cross any trading strategies based upon initiative uh, or responsive based trading strategies it's a good to know concept in market profile okay sir this is rohit here uh, one question one question is that uh, tomorrow when we are uh, dealing in the live market yeah uh, so are we parallelly looking at uh, even order flow when we are looking at market profile yeah we'll be looking into order flow we are doing it uh, uh, for the past uh, couple of days also we'll be doing the same thing but now we'll be focusing more on order flow also parallelly so uh, yes we'll be focusing on 
Thank you, sir. But most of the activity will be happening during middle of the markets, so middle of the day around 12 o'clock or 12:30. So maybe what we can do here is that one another day we will take a some middle of the day. We'll have one more session uh, where we look into how to look into the order flow and market profile during middle of the day. So we'll be having maybe next Wednesday we'll have one more session around 12:30 to 1:30. Probably that is the ideal time where most of the trading activity happens. And most of the trading are we can say like 12:45 to 1:45, right? So that is where we can say how to monitor the confidence during middle of the day, how to observe order flow during middle of the day. Probably many times you would have been seen how to measure the confidence during start of the markets. Now let's try to do one more session on Wednesday, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, right? So where we'll be uh, discussing about how to see the markets, how to see the order flow, how to see the market profile, how to measure the confidence. During the middle of the day, right? So that we will keep it on Wednesday. Uh, right? so that helps us to measure. Uh, that helps us to look into the finer details during the afternoon session. During the afternoon session, what do you have to focus? Right? Now you might have a fair idea what to focus when there are when there is a B period single prints or a C period single prints. Now let's focus on uh, afternoon session. What do you have to focus? Right? That's what we will deal it on the Wednesday session. Wednesday there will be two sessions. One in the morning, 9:30 to 10:30, and another one uh, around 12:45 uh, uh, to 1:45. I think that will do, or 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 maybe we can make it as one to two. One to two, we'll uh, make it as one more session there. Same link, everything is same link. You can use the same Zoom link to join on Wednesday, right? Sure. Thank you, Sir. Yeah. Okay. So, do we need uh, order flow as a mandatory tool for the live market for the day trading? No, it is not mandatory. Even you can do order flow without order flow. Also, you can do it. But with the order flow, you will be able to get a tighter risk. I'm talking about three points, four points kind of risk in Nifty, or something like a ten to twenty points risk in Bank Nifty. That kind of tighter risk you will be able to practice if you have order flow charts. If you don't have that uh, order flow charts, maybe you can still you can do intraday trades, but you cannot know that uh, time. You cannot time the markets exactly. Um, Oh, as I shown, like the ABC elongation, I know that it's a ABC elongation, but when to enter, uh, that confirmation I can able to get from out of flow, right? With a with a tighter risk, your risk will be very tighter if you know what is happening in the markets from the out of flow perspective. But uh, without that, uh, if you are not using uh, out of flow, if you want to use market profile, still you can do intraday, still you can pair those B period and C period, but you cannot be sure about the timings. You can only play the high probability game that the B and C will be getting repaired. You'll be able to repair it, but you don't know what could be the upper side. Okay, okay. Yeah, yesterday we went through some positional setups, no? Yes. Yeah. Can we have some day trading setups in in, in the next sessions? Yeah, next session we'll be talking about that. It'll be for thirteen uh, day trading setups, which I want to talk about in market profile. Okay, only in market profile. Only in market profile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be on the next week. Yes, that will be on the next week. Only intraday setups. There will be. We'll be closely talking about ten to thirteen intraday trade setups. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you.